We're on chapter 19 of A Course in Miracles. This chapter is called The Attainment of Peace. <clears throat> and we are on section two, sin versus error. Before we start reading this, this part, I just want to mention that um, apparently I have this, this version as well um, that came out recently. Uh, this claims to be um, from the original uh, shorthand notes of Helen Shookman, the scribe of A Course in Miracles. And this chapter was originally called From Sin to Peace. And it was changed to The Attainment of Peace. <clears throat> Obviously, there's not only this is this chapter talking a lot about um, faith, and, uh, it's also talking about sin. And this, this section is... Uh, definitely gets deep into it and, and it brings up a very important distinction between sin and uh, mistakes. Mistakes can be corrected, sin cannot. Here we go. Sin versus error. <clears throat> it is essential that error be not confused with sin and it is this distinction that makes salvation possible. For error can be corrected and the wrong made right. But sin, were it possible, would be irreversible. The belief in sin is necessarily based on the firm conviction that minds, not bodies, can attack. And thus the mind is guilty and will forever so remain unless a mind not part of it can give it absolution. Sin calls for punishment as error for correction, and the belief that punishment is correction is clearly insane. Sin is not an error, for sin entails an arrogance which, is, which the idea of error lacks. To sin would be to violate reality and to succeed. Sin is the proclamation that attack is real and guilt is justified. It assumes the Son of God is guilty and has thus succeeded in losing his innocence and making himself what God created not. Thus is creation seen as not eternal and the will of God open to opposition and defeat. Sin is the grand illusion underlying all the ego's grandiosity. For by it, God himself is changed and rendered incomplete. The Son of God can be mistaken. He can deceive himself. He can even turn the power of his mind against himself. But he cannot sin. There is nothing he can do that would really change his reality in any way, nor make, his, make him really guilty. That is what sin would do for such is, the, what, such is its purpose. Yet for all the wild insanity inherent in the whole idea of sin, it is impossible. For the wages of sin is death. And how can the immortal die? A major tenet in the ego's insane religion is that sin is not error but truth, and it is innocent and it is innocence that would deceive. Purity is seen as arrogance, and the acceptance of the self as sinful is perceived as holiness. And it is this doctrine that replaces the reality of the Son of God as his Father created him, and willed that he be forever. Is this humility? Or is it rather an attempt to wrest creation away from truth and keep it separate? Any attempt to reinterpret sin as error is always indefensible to the ego. The idea of sin is wholly sacrosanct to its thought system and quite unapproachable except with reverence and awe. It is the most, quote, holy, unquote, concept in the ego's system, lovely and powerful, wholly true and necessarily protected with every defense at its disposal. For here lies its, quote, best, unquote, defense, which all the others serve. Here is its armor, its protection, and the fundamental purpose of the special relationship in its interpretation. It can indeed be said the ego made its world on sin. Only in such a world could everything be upside down. This is the strange illusion that makes the clouds of guilt seem heavy and impenetrable. The solidness that this world's foundation seems to have is found in this. For sin has changed creation from an idea of God to an ideal the ego wants. A world it rules, made up of bodies, mindless and capable of complete corruption and decay. If this is a mistake, it can be undone easily by truth. Any mistake can be corrected if truth be left to judge it. But if this mistake is given the status of truth, to what can it be brought? The, quote, holiness, unquote, of sin is kept in place by just this strange device. As truth, it is inviolate, and everything is brought to it for judgment. As a mistake, it must be brought to truth. 
It is impossible to have faith in sin, for sin is faithful, faithlessness. Yet it is possible to have faith that a mistake can be corrected. There is no stone in all the egos embattled citadel that is more heavily defended than the idea that sin is real, the natural expression of what the Son of God has made himself to be and what he is. To the ego, this is no mistake, for this is its reality. This is the, quote, truth, unquote, from which escape will always be impossible. This is his past, his present, and his future. For he has somehow managed to corrupt his father and change his mind completely. More and then the death of God, whom sin has killed. And this would be the ego's wish, which in its madness it believes it has accomplished. Would you not rather that all this be nothing more than a mistake, entirely correctable, and so easily escaped from that its whole correction is like walking through a mist into the sun? For that is all it is. Perhaps you would be tempted to agree with the ego that it is far better to be sinful than mistaken. Yet think you carefully before you allow yourself to make this choice. Approach it not lightly, for it is the choice of heaven. It is the choice of hell or heaven. <laughs> Helen Helen Shookman used to used to joke. <laughs> um, about heaven and Helen. <laughs> um, Helen is the scribe of Course in Miracles. Um, so this is a very important section. I, I believe that Jesus has already brought this up in the past, at the beginning of, of A Course in Miracles. He talked about this. The, the difference between sin and error or, or, or the idea that mistakes can be corrected um, but sin is very, very serious, very, very real. Um, Jesus is is really, um, you know, making it sound here like uh, sin is like the cornerstone of the of the ego's whole thought system. It rests on this idea that that we are sinful, and obviously. Christianity, <clears throat> um, from probably from the very beginning, I don't know, you know, when, maybe in Paul, you know, P Paul said in, in Romans, let's, uh, let me just give you the citation here. Paul said in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, um, it is common as I understand it in Christianity, to say I'm a sinner. Um, I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover, and I'm a sinner. <laughs> right? I'm a, I'm a sinner. Um, and it is only through faith in Jesus that I am redeemed. Now, that, that idea obviously can work for, and has worked for many people. Um, has it has it truly enlightened them? That's an open question. Maybe it has. You know, I think all paths um, lead to Rome. Romans, <laughs> no. All, all paths ultimately lead you home. Um, if they're, if they're, if you're sincere and if you really desire to know God, you will find God. You know, I think that's one of the 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 major points of A Course in Miracles is that. All you need to do is have that sincere desire. And if you have that sincere desire, it will happen. It doesn't matter what path you take because the path really is irrelevant ultimately. It, everything depends on you. It doesn't depend on the teacher. It doesn't depend on the path. Everything is up to you. Um, so whether you, whether you have this idea that I am a poor, helpless sinner and except by faith in Jesus, I will not be saved. And Jesus, Jesus' death and, and resurrection re has redeemed me. That, that, that has worked, apparently, for, for a lot of people. People that come to A Course of Miracles, though, um, tend to be on the outs with that idea. Um, and for good reason. And Jesus is trying to explain, you know, the why people have a problem with that, which is, um, you know, 
why would God create a world in which sin is so real and then then we need and then God needs to kill his own son or send his own son to be killed in order to redeem us from that sin and um the answer generally is free will. You know, we have free will, and, and because we have free will, we... Um, but there is this idea of original sin, right? The fall of Adam, fall of Adam and Eve, that, that, that they were tempted. But even there, the, the question, it begs the question of, why would God create a snake or a serpent <laughs> that tempted them to begin with? You know what? What's the deal with that? <laughs> it's it's a crazy story. It's all really if you you know if you go deep into it, you if you're if you're a questioning person, which is, tends to be people that that study a course of miracles tend to be those who are not satisfied with with the dogma of of religion, and all religions have dogmas. You know, it's institutionalized dogma. Um, and, and, and most religions are based in this idea of sin and unworthiness and that we have to do something um, in order to be, to be acceptable to God. And Jesus is saying, no, it's, there is no sin. You know, bottom line, <laughs> point blank, there is no sin. Sin is an illusion. The only thing that there is 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 a, is is a mistaken idea of what we are, and and all mistakes can be corrected, and Jesus in in a course of miracles is coming to correct mistakes that have crept in to our thinking, um, and and some of the biggest mistakes come from religion, and some of the biggest come from Christianity. At least as far as the the path of a course of miracles goes, because again, you could follow the the path of traditional Christianity or fundamentalist Christianity, and you could find your way home. Why not? Um, but for those who are again who are on the outs with it, the course is presenting an alternative, and the course's path is to say. No, there is no sin. God, God does not even know of sin. There's nothing to forgive. Um, there's only the son's mistaken belief that he has sinned. There's only our, our mistaken identity crisis. <laughs> and we, we think we are what we're not. Um, and, and Jesus is trying to help to correct our vision. But in, in, in terms of mistakes and correction, there's no fear. There, there needs to be no fear of punishment because if you could be corrected, then you don't need to, to be afraid that you're going to be punished if you don't do it. Whereas a sin it tends to make it much more serious and you like you need some kind of salvation outside of yourself to come and save you from this serious sin that you have done or that you are even you know that you are sinful and that you need to be redeemed from something outside of yourself um the, so you know it's like there's <laughs> it's the ego thought system and the, and the Holy Spirit's thought system. The Holy Spirit's thought system is there's only mistakes. Mistakes can be corrected. And um, in letting go of the mistakes, you will find your way home again. Uh, the ego's thought system is sin is very real. And it it's going to take you a very, very long time, maybe never, to get out of this. And... and but really the ego, as, as Jesus said before, the ego really wants to send you to hell. <laughs> you know, that, that's its, that's its um, ultimate goal is hell. And Jesus here at the end is saying, um, he's asking us all a question. And, and you know, he, Jesus asks a lot of questions in A Course in Miracles. 
uh, and, the, and usually they're rhetorical questions. <laughs> Would you not rather that all this be nothing more than a mistake, entirely correctable and so easily escaped from that its whole correction is like walking through a mist into the sun? For that is all it is. It's a rhetorical, re, was a rhetorical question. He's saying, that's what it is. It's, it's like the ego is so, it's, it's like a light mist. <laughs> um, it's not even a cloud. It's a, it's, a, it's a mist in front of the sun. Perhaps you would be tempted to agree with the ego that it's far better to be sinful than mistaken. That would be the traditional Christian view. Um, Yet, thank you carefully before you allow yourself to make this choice. Approach it not lightly, for it is the choice of hell or heaven. So, again, you know, the, uh, Jesus wants to, to clarify that the ego is hell-bent on hell. It wants to send you to hell. If, you, if you're allied with the ego, um, here's what you get. <laughs> Depression. Um, Feelings of unworthiness, shame, doubt, um, suicidal thoughts, and ultimately, I'm horrible. I'm I'm terrible, and I need to suffer, die, and even be sent to hell. That's the ego's thought system. If you if you follow that, you know, to a T. <laughs> Not to the cross. <laughs> Um, well, it is, a, it is, it is a, to a T. It is crucifixion. You know, the, it, following the ego is crucifixion, whereas following the Holy Spirit is resurrection, resurrecting the Son of God. If you follow the Son of God's thought system, what do you get? Joy, peace, love, um, knowledge, all that you the 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 knowing of what you truly are so sin versus error um is there anything else to say about this i think we'll i think we'll leave it at that today and uh next uh reading is going to be the unreality of sin and we'll we'll, we'll keep talking about this. Hopefully um, this was a little bit helpful, maybe truly helpful, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you very soon. Thanks so much for listening. Adios.